Hi, welcome to this video on area and perimeter of two-dimensional shapes. Once again, if you want to pause the video now and take down um, these two definitions, definition of area and perimeter, as well as um, the equations for the area of these five shapes. Um, you might want to maybe sketch the five shapes just so you know what they look like and um, possibly have spelling names, etc. Um, right, so assuming you've done that, we'll carry on. So, <clears> the <throat> first thing that you need to know, uh, which isn't covered in this video, you're going to need to know something about these shapes. So if I say shape B is a square, you need to know that it has four sides, um, and that it has, uh, those four sides are all equal, and they are uh, perpendicular or at 90 degrees to each other. Uh, that's very important. It will be assumed by the symbol that you do know that. Um, if you don't, perhaps go and find a video on properties of shape, or properties of quadrilateral specifically, um, and that will be, you'll be able to uh, work that out. In addition, you'll need to know the different types of triangles. Um, so, uh, for example, this triangle here um, is an equilateral, sorry, not an equilateral, uh, an isosceles triangle, and you'll need to know what that means. Uh, basically, it means that this side and this side are equal to each other, and this angle and this angle are equal to each other as well. But if you go and find a video on that, it will give you a bit more detail. But I'll assume that you do know that for the purposes of this video. Right, first thing we're going to look at is the perimeter, and the perimeter is the shortest distance around the outside of a shape. Now, that means that, you know, you mean I could go around the outside of a shape like this, you could go around the outside of, of this shape, kind of like that. But if I want the shortest distance, I'm going to pretty much map my distance travel to the outline of the shape. And what you'll be required to do is you'll either be required to measure, or you'll be given the actual measurements, or you'll maybe be given some of them and you'll have to work out some of the others. Um, but what you have to do is, let's say we have to measure this, that tells me that it's 9 centimeters. I know that this is a square, so that all the sides are 9 centimeters. 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, very easy, 9 times 4 is 36. So I could very easily do that. Whether you want to use a formula for the perimeter of a shape, so I'd say length of one side times 4, or in the case of a rectangle, these two sides are equal, those two sides are equal. So if I find the length of that and the length of that, I can just double it, or I can double that, double that, and then add them together. It's up to you, you can do that if you want to, but uh, the goal here is to find the shortest distance around the outside of a shape. All right, so that's perimeter. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it because it simply involves you adding up the sides um, of a shape. Now, sometimes they'll give you a shape such as this. Let's say something like that, and I'll tell you that that is 10, and this here is 4, and for some reason, uh, they left out the fact that, uh, let's say that's 7 and that's 2, and you don't know what that is there, okay? You don't know what that is. But you can very easily work it out, because if this whole thing is 10, and this little bit here is 4, you can very, much, you can very easily work out that this is going to be Six. So um, again, you're trying to find out all the sides and add them together. And sometimes a question might might just leave out a side, and then you can kind of you know use your own discretion or um, use your mathematical ability to try and fill in the gap there. Okay. So I'm going to focus on mainly on area here because that's the most complicated, um, uh, most complicated of, of of these two. So the area here is the 2D space that a shape takes up, and we. Talking, uh, when we talk of area, we talk in units squared. So, for example, we'll say centimeters squared, or meters squared, or millimeters squared. But we talk in terms of, or we also say square centimeters, square meters, or uh, square millimeters. What we're actually saying is that if, if, I, if I look at just centimeters squared, I have one block that is one centimeter by one centimeter. What I ask myself is how many of these blocks will cover whatever shape I'm given. Now, when it comes to a square, it's actually relatively easy because if I remove this underneath here, I've conveniently already drawn that, you can see that I've got one centimeter block there, or one centimeter block there, one centimeter there, 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 and I can count them, all right? And I can then work out what the area of this shape is. However, there's actually an easier way. I know that I've got nine down this side, so nine squares, I know that I've got 9 across the top. So if I've got 9 down this side, I've got 9 squares by 9 squares, I can work out the area of a square by just going 9 times 9, giving me 81, in this case, let's say they're centimeters, 
squared. I mean, if they had been meters, it would be meters squared. If it had been millimeters, they'd be millimeters squared. So I can very easily do that. <coughs> Moving on to a rectangle. A rectangle is simply a square that I've stretched out. So as I did with the square, I simply have to work out how long it is, how wide it is, and multiply them together. And so for the square and the rectangle, I have a very easy formula to work out the area. It's simply the length times the width. And again, what I'm trying to work out there is how many little square centimeters or square units fit into that whole area. Right, so if I remove these two, because they are the, the easiest, I'll kind of, or maybe I'll move them, move this one onto this side, and move this one over here so we can just have reference for them. Uh, so here is our square and our rectangle. If we have a focus on the triangle, now the problem with the triangle is that it simply isn't a rectangle or a square. It, it, like, and, and the reason that that's a problem is because I've got these little square centimeters that I'm trying to fit onto this. And the problem is if I try and fit it here, things become a bit of a problem. So what I do is I use a square and a rectangle as a reference shape. If I can get this to be equal to this, my life's much easier because I can just go length times width. And I'll have to adapt the length times width formula to get back to the area of the original shape. So in the case of a rectangle, I mean in the case of a, of a triangle, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to double the sides. Okay? Oh, sorry, double the so sides, double the area. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double that there. Right, now straight away I know that I've made the area twice as big. So if I want to find the area of a triangle, it's going to be half of whatever this area is because I've made it twice as big. Now what shape's that? Well, that's pretty easy. That's a rectangle. And a rectangle is length times width. Now, in a triangle, we call this bit at the bottom our base, because that is the base of the triangle, the bottom bit of the triangle. And we call this bit here the height. Now, please note, in a triangle, I'm going to remove these now. In a triangle, this measurement here from the base to the top there must be 90 degrees. Right? It must be 90 degrees because as you can see this side here is 90 degrees to the base. Right? So I have to make sure that it is 90 degrees there and we call that the vertical height. So the equation for the area of a triangle is half base times height. And you've just got to make sure uh, that this height over here is the vertical height. It's very important that you're measuring the vertical height because sometimes you get a triangle uh, that might look like that and it's very easy to find the base over here and then a lot of people want to find this height here okay it's called the sloping height we don't want the sloping height okay you've got to be make sure you're using the vertical height for a triangle okay so moving the triangle out now let's have a look at these other two shapes we've got our parallelogram and our two trapeziums here now the parallelogram um, if you have a look at this it's kind of just a rectangle that's falling over, a skewed rectangle. And what I do with this is a very similar method that I did with a triangle. I know the area of a rectangle, right? I know how to work it out. So if I can turn this into a rectangle, job's good, it's, it, it'll be brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off the end of this. I haven't changed the area, it's still exactly the same. I'm just going to put it on the other side. Alright, so what have we done? <clears throat> I haven't changed the length of the bottom side. Okay, the length of the bottom side is still the same. Right? I've just simply moved that bit, which was there, simply moved that to there. So my base length is exactly the same in length of base. And now what I have here is a vertical height, similar to what we had in the triangle. This height here must be vertical when I'm measuring the area of a parallelogram. So it's base times by vertical height. Base times vertical height. So area of base, or sorry, area of base, length of base, times by vertical height to work out the area of a parallelogram. Okay, so parallelogram, done. Excellent. My next two shapes, they both, or they are both trapezia, 
um, trapezium being the plural for trapezium. You will most often see this type of trapezium. Uh, that is called a um, isosceles trapezium because these sides are both equal. And this trapezium here is simply an irregular trapezium. Right. Now, you're probably going to guess what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is turn them into rectangles. So for this one here, I'm just going to take the shape and duplicate it to there. And instantly I have a rectangle. And this one here, I'm not going to duplicate it into a rectangle. I'm going to duplicate it and make a parallelogram. We know how to work out the area of a parallelogram. We know how to work out the area of a rectangle. The catch is here, knowing what I'm actually multiplying. If we have a look at this trapezium here, we've got the area of this trapezium. If I, if I just mark off the sides, I've got side A and side B. When I duplicate this, like that, that is still side B. And this is still side A. Now straight away I have doubled the area of this, so this is my area is going to be half. And if I want to work out the area of a rectangle, it's length of one side times length of the other. So this length here is actually the length of side A plus the length of side B. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to times it. What am I timesing it by? What if we go back to our original shape? Timesing it by the vertical height. Okay? Just timesing it by the vertical height. And uh, for area for a trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides. I take that off. <clears throat> half the sum of the parallel sides. So both sides added together times the height between them. And that's how we calculate the area of a trapezium. Um, with the trapezium that looks like that, it's exactly the same process. I will simply find side A, side B, and then I will find the vertical height, the height between them there like that. And I can either measure it or be given some method of calculating it. Now, what sometimes happens, sometimes occurs, is that we get given what is called compound shapes. <coughs> And compound shapes are simply shapes that are made up of more than one other shape. Right, so if I leave my square and my rectangle there, a compound shape is made up of, let's say, this shape here, and this shape here. And all you've got to do is keep your wits about you. Yes, it looks like an L, but is it actually an L? No, it's not. It's two separate shapes. So if I'm finding the area of these two shapes, I find the area of the L, and I find the area of the area, the area of the rectangle, and the area of the square. And that way, when I add them together, I end up with the area of the L. What you do have to be careful of is if I'm working out the perimeter of a compound shape, that side there, yep, that's the full side, that's the full side, that's the full side, but this side here is not a full side. So I can't simply find the area of the rectangle and the area of the square. Because if I did the same thing with the square, you'll notice that this side here is not being used. And in the rectangle, if I remove that, this side here is not being used fully. Right? So it's very important that when you're doing perimeter of compound shapes, keep your wits about you. Right, but it is in essence the same. I'm trying to find the area or the length around the outside, the shortest distance around the outside of a shape. And with the area, I'm trying to find uh, the 2D shape that a shape takes up. I'm sorry, the 2D space that a shape takes up. Alright, so if you've got done these notes and you want to go back and review uh, anything that's been said, perhaps copy down some of the shapes and the shape names and what they look like, please feel free to do that. Um, for me though, thanks very much. Cheers.